Well, welcome to another specimen series and what a great way to start off. Literally just cast my rods out. We're on the River Trent and we're hoping to catch a few barbel and I can't make my mind up whether this is a small barbel. Let me just feed my rod around there a bit, nip one per one. It's either a small barbel or a chub. I'm not quite sure yet, but the rods have literally been out five minutes and hopefully we're going to get a few bites we're going to bump into some of these bigger barbel that live in the River Trent. I think this could potentially be a fairly hectic session. I've literally cast two rods out with little mesh PVA bags with pellets and boilies on. Me and Chris have hardly sat down talking about how we're going to start the video. Well, both rods have gone off in about 10 minutes. So it's a rising river. As you can see, it's raining. These are really barbely conditions. I think Chris is probably going to tell me off for catching too many fish on this trip. <laughs> this one feels a little bit bigger. <laughs> that's a decent fish that one it literally brushed the edge of the net didn't like that net whatsoever but I don't want to get this one in the net it looks like a real big one to start off with I have still got a little one resting in the net we've only just netted the first fish and maybe I need two nets when I'm barbel fishing here you go go on <laughs> Whoa. That'll do. <laughs> what a start that is. I might just unhook that little one in the net and let it out. We'll have a proper look at the big one if this rain ease up a little bit. That's the first little fella that I'm going to just let out straight away because I'm more interested in that nice big one underneath. So thank you very much, but this is the one we want to look at. I don't know if you can quite see that. Sometimes digital scales aren't too good on camera, but 11 pound two, it's settled on. So the second fish is a nice double. Well, there we go. I'm mega happy with that. Within 20 minutes of fishing, I've just slipped that little one back and a double figure barbel already. Just over 11 pound. This river, the River Trent, has got so many big barbel in it. And it's mad to think there's numbers of barbel bigger than this. But to get an 11 pound within 20 minutes is really good going. So I'm going to slip this fella back. I've been coming up here a couple of times in recent weeks. I'm going to tell you a little bit about those trips. But for now, I better get this back, get them rods back out, and I'll tell you what I've been up to. Okay. I always like to, I know we've said it lots of times before, but I always like to rest barbel before I let them swim off. The water is quite a bit cooler. We are into October now, but I'm still going to wait until it's ready to swim off, even if I have to hold it here for a few minutes. It's nice to have the opportunity just to have a nice look at it before it swims off. Are you ready? Here she goes. Thank you very much. Nice 
slow, ploddy one, this one. Ah. <laughs> He's ready to go. <laughs> Quite embarrassingly small for the fight it's given. <laughs> it's not um, it's not tiny, but um he was certainly punching above his weight, but I can't believe how hectic it is. The river is well up and the barbel are on the feed. Well, the action is absolutely manic. Poor old Chris hasn't even had his first cup of tea yet and we've probably been here about 40 minutes an hour and I think this is fish number four. So, um. Definitely, I know I've said it earlier, but this extra rain in the river, it really switches the river trend on and even barbel this size, absolutely pull your arm off. off we go. Well, Chris has persuaded me to reel both those rods in so I can do a talking bit to camera telling you all about my previous trips that I've had up the river recently. But in my opinion, this time of the day, late afternoon into evening is absolutely dynamite. So I've persuaded him otherwise. We've decided I'm gonna fish on through the afternoon into the evening, catch as many barbel as I can. I mean, that 11 pounder was a brilliant start, but wouldn't it be nice to catch one a bit bigger than that? But normally mornings have been quieter, so I'll fish till dark. We'll probably reel the rods in tonight to get some kip. And then tomorrow morning, when it quietens down a bit, which I think it might, I'm going to tell you a little bit about those previous trips. But for now, I want to catch more fish. Lovely barbel, that one. Thank you very much. That is pretty much barbel perfection. That's a nice size fish as well. It's probably hovering around the 10 pound mark. I haven't weighed it, but an absolutely beautiful fish. And that's the end of a little hectic spell. I've got both rods reeled in. I had a few smaller fish, just had this one. The rain has stopped, but before I put those rods back out, I'm gonna show you the rigs that I'm using here on the mighty River Trent. Now the River Trent, as I've mentioned, is a bit of a beast of the river, especially when there's some extra water on and the fact that there's some very large barbel in here as well. So the setup that I use reflects the nature of the river and the fact that I might be lucky enough to connect to a really special fish. So the hardware itself, this is a new rod in the Advanta range. This is the Barbel Twin Tip. It comes with two top sections, a 2.25 and a 2.75. And on this trip, I've got the 2.25 section, but perhaps if the river was really high and it was a winter flood, I might step up to that heavier top section. And then on that rod, I've got a Shimano bait runner. A bait runner is a must. If you've had a barbel bite before, you know what they do. They absolutely rip off. And without a bait runner, you'd be left with no rod on the rest. And the line that I use, again, 15 pound line. There's strong fighting fish. There's lots of snags in here. You don't want your main line to let you down. And now to the important bit, the rig itself. And on here, we've got the Corrent Bolt and Run set up, which is a clever little bead with a run ring that actually plugs on top of the bead. And the good thing about that, when you're casting it out, whether you're using a straight lead or a feeder, 
On a normal running setup, sometimes that feeder will run up the line when it casts out and they can be a bit difficult to cast. But because that plug's on there, it all stays down there above the swivel and casts much better. But it's completely safe because that will unplug off that bead if necessary. And then this is the bit that I think is even more important. The main section of my hook link, I like quite a long hook link on these big rivers. This is probably three to four foot. And in this case, it's 15 pound fluorocarbon. And the reason I use fluorocarbon is it's much tougher than mono. When those barbels are diving between those rocks, I have had occasions where mono will get broken quite easily as soon as it rubs on something. But as fluorocarbon is quite thick and quite stiff, I don't like to use it for my entire hook link. I have a little figure of eight loop on the end there and just over the knot I put a little bit of tungsten putty which just neatens it up nicely and then on that little loop I've got a short section of 18 pound supernatural braid which I loop to loop on there with a simple hair rig with a boily. If you want to know exactly how to tie this rig we have done a quick bite and I'll put a link to that in the description below showing you everything you need and exactly how to do it. The light is starting to fade already and I'm going to get these rods back out for a little while. I probably will fish an hour or two into dark tonight and although barbel fishing is really good after dark, I'm afraid my want for a bit of sleep is probably going to be more than it is for a few barbel and without sounding big headed I'm confident they're going to feed tomorrow morning. So I'm going to get a bit of kip, be nice and rested, enjoy some action during the daytime but I will leave these out for an hour or two into dark because I'm sure we're going to get some more bites. Well, when I predicted we'd get another bite or two before it got dark, I didn't think it'd be quite that quick. That's been probably about one minute since I cast these out. Dusk is a really good time to catch barbel, especially when the river's high. And this hasn't disappointed. <laughs> yeah, well, that was always going to happen at some point. Let's just mute that one. Luckily enough, it's not too snaggy here, so I'll concentrate on getting this one in, and I better quite quickly pick that rod up. Right, I better grab that other rod, because I'm pretty sure the fish is still on it. that was slightly manic and I've got both those barbels safely in the net rather than drag them up the bank attached to the rods I'm going to hook them in the net we'll get them up on the unhooking mat Chris is going to have to get his light on the camera now because the light is now starting to go but we will have a quick look at them before we slip them back well how about that the sport is absolutely mad here today on the river Trent I wish this river was a little bit closer to me it's a three hour drive for me but when you get the conditions right like this I mean this was a double take and I'm sure there's going to be loads more fish on this trip the river is absolutely fishing its socks off well, I'm just going to rest these two in the edge here until they're ready to swim off and I am going to put those rods back out just into dark for an hour or two but unless I catch a really nice fish I'll probably catch up with you in the morning because both me and Chris want to have a bite to eat before it gets too dark and probably try and get a little bit of sleep as well. Well, good morning and at last that rain has stopped. It rained heavy nearly all night last night. I did fish in the dark for about an hour, had a few more fish, including the 9.15, so one just under 10 pound. But me and Chris really didn't fancy trying to film and fish in that heavy rain. So we got some good quality sleep. It looks much nicer this morning. The river's in really good condition. It's rose even more overnight, so I've got fresh hooks on. I'm now gonna get the rods out and fingers crossed these barb will continue to feed throughout the day.
Well, it generally has been quite quiet in the morning on previous trips, but it took too long this morning. It might be because the river is in such good condition that these barbel are going to feed a bit earlier today. There you go, it might only be a small barbel, but it's quite an important one because it's the first one of the morning and hopefully it means they're going to come on the feed a bit earlier. There you go, good little fella. Whoa, he's off. We were literally then positioning the chair to tell you a little bit about some of my previous trips up here on the trend this year. And yet again, one of the rods has ripped off. The action on this trip is ridiculous. And I'm gonna try and call this one. This does feel like a better fish. These bigger barbel, they're a bit more ploddy, a bit slower. And he's just swimming up against the flow. So whether it's a huge one or not, I don't know, but it certainly feels like a better one. Thank you very much. In you go. There's definitely another double that one. Well there we go. I was pretty sure that was another double and £11.6 that one so another really nice barbel. Or well, how about that for a Trent barbel? It's just a case of wading through the bites. You might be catching a few smaller fish, but you're never far away from a big one on this river. And at 11 pounds six, it's another nice fish. And I'm really pleased to get my second double of the trip. You ready? He's ready. Well, it's a lovely problem to have, but we've actually had to reel the rods in so I can take five minutes just to sit down and tell you about a couple of the previous trips I've had up here recently. So I always try and get to the River Trent a couple of times this time of year. It can be a really good time to be on the river. And I always try and coincide those trips when we've had a little bit of rain, because as I keep saying on this trip, when you get some rain and the river starts to rise, it really switches these barbel on. And well, my first trip, I probably got what I wished for and a little bit more. It rained really heavy the entire time when I got here. And the stretch which I was fishing had some really steep banks and they were a little bit treacherous. There were some steps to get down to the river, but the more rain we had, the more muddier it got and I had to be so careful. And it was quite challenging fishing. That stretch is really, really snaggy, but despite all that mud, and the snags, I started catching a few barbels straight away. I never had anything massive that trip. And at one point I did get a double take when they were really on the feed, but I had a flurry of fish topped off by a nice fish that probably wasn't quite doubles, but a really nice shaped fish. He was quite short and really deep and probably one of those barbel that you think is gonna grow on to be a really big fish at some point. So a week or two later, I planned another trip to come back and I actually came on the stretch that I'm fishing today. And yeah, you've guessed it, when I got out of the car, it was absolutely lashing it down. So I'm gonna show you the clip when I got here, which I took on my phone, so it might not be quite as good as Chris's footage, but if you watch the next clip, you'll see exactly what I was faced with when I got to the river. It was a bit of a theme to my Trent trip so far this autumn. That seems to be rain, so not particularly nice weather arriving. I have to set up in. It might just switch those barbel on. A rising river can quite often be a really good river for getting a few bites, but my predicament at the minute is right down the back there, just around that bend is the swim I fancy. I don't know if I want to carry all the kit down there in this weather, so I might just fish a few hours this morning, closer to the car park, and then when the weather stops, have a move. So rather than get absolutely soaked through, carrying my gear all the way down there, I might just snatch a few hours somewhere in front of me because it is a good spot as well but I really fancy that bend for the night so fingers crossed this rain switches them barbel on well who am I kidding 
I drive three hours to get here, probably 150 miles, and then I neglect the last 500 meters. So, although it's still raining, I'm gonna get straight down on that bend, rather than stopping in that first peg. Walking out of breath already. I think if I set up in that first peg, I'd constantly think about moving. Sometimes there's a swim on a stretch that just has your name on it, and you need to be in there. Well, I was definitely rewarded on that second trip from pushing my bar in the pouring rain all the way down to the, exactly the same bend that I'm fishing now, in fact. The bites came straight away. I'd, I'd normally get the bait dropper out and I'd normally bait up with a bit of hemp and a bit of pellet, but as it was raining so heavy, I got the brolly up straight away and I just cast the rods out with some mesh PVA bags and I thought maybe I'll bait up once the rain eases a bit. But it seems I didn't need to do that. I had a bite almost instantly, although it was only a small barbel. It's really encouraging. It just tells you that those fish are on the feed. And then throughout the day, into the evening, it was bite after bite after bite. And as I've mentioned, all you need to do on this river is keep getting bites and you won't be far away from a big fish. And throughout that session, I believe I had four fish into double figures, several big nines, and I did fish into dark for an hour or two. I had a fish around 12 pounds just into dark, and I thought to myself, I'm probably better off getting a little bit of kip than struggling on in the rain throughout the dark, then I'll be a little bit fresher for the next morning so I can fish a bit better. And the following morning, you guessed it, that action continued. No real big fish the following morning, but lots and lots of bites, including a few double takes. It just proves what a fantastic barbel river this can be. So, well, I'm quite keen to get the rods back out on this session, because this session hasn't disappointed here. We've had so many fish on this trip, including a couple of nice ones, but it's not over yet. There could be an even bigger fish around the corner, but I'm definitely not gonna catch it whilst those rods are leaning up against the brolly. So I'm gonna put some fresh baits on, some new PVA bags, get the rods back out. Let's see if we can catch a bigger one. had every weather going since we've been in. We had all that heavy rain last night. We had a bit of sunshine this morning and now it's got really windy and overcast and the right hand rod has ripped off out of the blue. And I don't know, it feels quite heavy. You never know a barbel, they can punch well above their weight sometimes. Fingers crossed. Happened several times on this session. I've just netted the first one, it's resting in the net, and this rod has ripped off as well. So it's definitely a little hectic spells, although the whole session's been fairly busy. We do have some states of the tide where they really come on the feed. That's exactly what's just happened. Mate. 
Well, you'll have to excuse the wind if you can hear it on the mic. It's got really windy now and there's nowhere to hide away from it here. We're up on the high bank next to the river, but what a way to end the session. The River Trent, well, I couldn't have asked for more. We've had numbers of bite. I've lost count the amount of barbel we've caught. One or two nice ones, but what a brilliant trip. So I'm going to slip these two back. We've got a long drive home. As much as I want to carry on fishing, me and Chris have got homes to go to and need to get on the road. But don't forget, if you like this series, and you like this episode don't forget to give it a like subscribe to our channel and i'll catch up with you on the next episode